Hi, I'm Tim Carter. This is Anna Builder, and I am live. Glad you're here. <laughs> you just missed it. I um not not 60 seconds ago, uh, the uh, a bunch of the snow released from the roof over me, and it sounds like an. I mean, it is an avalanche, but it sounds like an earthquake. And it would have been really kind of neat to see if that would have been captured here on the live stream. Uh, so we had a little bit of a, a warm up here in New Hampshire. I think it's the first time it's been above 32 degrees in weeks and weeks. And very welcome. It was very unusual to be outside today and just a uh, what I'm dressed in now, just a long sleeve T-shirt on this vest. Um, perfectly warm. You know, so just. It's going to be warm tomorrow, and then we're supposed to get another big dump of snow, and uh, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about the um, relocating a bathtub. Uh, I had a person ask me about that. Actually, he did a consult with me, one of my paid consults. Uh, I'll go into kind of some really good detail. Uh, it, it's it's a really great example of <clears throat> you know what happens when you get into a remodeling job and and you start to tear things apart, and it's like, uh-oh. <laughs> he had one of those, <clears throat> he had an uh-oh moment, <laughs> and didn't know what to do. I um, also want to talk a little bit about the digital library of mine. Uh, I'm, I've kind of held the price where it's at for the time being. I think it's a good idea, and uh, it's just something that you need to know about. Um, and you can get like over 112 of my digital products for uh, less than 50 cents a piece. <laughs> That's a pretty good deal. <laughs> I mean, it's a great deal. So I actually, I'll put the, I'll put the link to that in the chat right now because it's, I, I don't want to forget about doing that. But it's a really, really good deal, and uh, you should, you should take advantage of it. Uh, the, uh, I mean, you get all these checklists. You get my roofing ripoff book. You get, if you're building a new home, you get all the entire huge package of all the stuff I have about building a new home, uh, the, the the lot checklist, the uh, bid comparison spreadsheet, um, I, it's just so many things, I, I don't have them all memorized. But it's when you go to that link, just scroll down, you'll see everything that's in the digital library. It's a lot of stuff. Like I said, it's only 50 cents each. Uh, if you were to buy them all separately, like if you said, no, 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 I don't want to do that. I, I just want to buy them separately. Well, you'll spend about $1,200. So, um, it's a huge deal. Uh, if you have any questions about your home, uh, please put them in the chat, you know, or ask anything you have to ask about. That's you're the one who basically kind of controls the live stream. In other words, your questions, um, your comments are, are, are what are, are where we go. Simple as that. Let's talk a little bit about relocating a bathtub, what's involved. Uh, the typically when you're going to relocate a bathtub you're involved in a pretty major remodeling job because either you're changing the direction of it, uh, you're putting it, you know, you're kind of playing musical chairs with the fixtures in the bathroom, uh, whatever it might be. And, and if you're going to do that, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to encounter a little bit of challenge, a little bit of hardship with respect to the drain and the vent pipe, because, you got to have those. And the water lines are generally really easy. Water lines, and they've gotten a lot easier, especially if you go with PEX, because PEX pipes, they install just like electric cables. You know, they're flexible and you can just drill holes and put them wherever you want. Um, it's, it's really magical. Good stuff. Good stuff. But the drain and the vent line, that's more problematic. And I'll tell you with the story what happened to this gentleman. And I have a... Uh, I have a uh, column about it. And you'll be able to see a photo of it um, at the website. Um, it's actually right here. I'm going to bring it up for you. You probably ought to see this. Uh, uh, you probably should see this photo to help you understand what I'm talking about. Um, there we go. So take a look at that if you can. If you can open up another tab. What you're going to see is this gentleman... I forget how many years ago it was. Could have been 20 years ago uh, because that's when they were popular, maybe 30. The the previous owner or he had put in a platform tub. And uh, just think of that as basically just like a standard kitchen sink. 
In other words, your kitchen sink, you know, you cut a hole in the countertop and you drop the sink in and the sink, you know, overlaps the edge of the countertop. I'm talking about an overmount sink, not a fancy undermount. And, you know, I actually had one at my last house that I built for uh, my family. Um, and they were, they were really popular. Well, what's really interesting is that a lot of these platform tubs, they were jacuzzis, you know, they had motors. So you would have to build a platform. You'd have to build like a frame, basically a low table. And that's where you hide all of the pumps and all the other stuff, you know, but you have to provide access to the pump in case it goes bad. And what happens is once the carpenters frame that, and the plumber is going to set the tub, then he's got a lot of he's got a lot of flexibility as to where he can put uh, his vent pipe. And in the case of this this homeowner, the plumber decided to run the vent pipe on top of the subfloor, but inside the platform, so you didn't see it, and it, it allowed him to to get this vent pipe across the room or six feet away from the drain and find a place up into the wall where it could get up to the roof. And so, so when this homeowner took out the um, tub, he, um, he like, uh oh, <laughs> what am I going to do with this vent pipe? And he, luckily, he took a lot of really good photographs. And to make a long story short, uh, I determined, and I showed him what he could do. He could kind of roll. He could, he could, he could reconnect the vent to the drain line, and he could drill holes. Uh, through the floor joists uh, to 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 get it to get it to where it's got to go. But I also showed him you do have another option. You know, you could go up this exterior wall with a small vent pipe, and uh, not have to drill as many holes. And so I, I don't know which one he he went with, but he was able to get the vent pipe back below the floor. Uh, here's all you want to remember is that in a we call that like a flat vent situation. Um, here's a um, uh, I'm just trying to think, you know, in other words, it, here's a, here's a regular drain pipe. Like if my finger is at the drain pipe in the stack and here's where the my other finger is the horizontal line that comes over to the sink. Uh, typically, the vent pipe will rise up straight up above that. That's a standard. That's a standard setup. You know, that's a standard setup in a wall. And then that vent pipe just goes up and eventually connects to other vent pipes or and it goes out the roof or it could just go out the roof on its own. But if you have a you you can have a you can have a a drain line. I'll just use this. Um, well, we use a pencil. It might be a little bit better. You could have a drain like so. This pencil. I'll hold it up where you can see it. So this is a drain line. This pencil, and you know the end of the pencil towards you is where it's going down to the sewer. Well, off the side of this, you could actually have a vent pipe come up and just raise up a little bit, and then go backwards. You know, go go one way or the other to till it finds a wall. So when you, we call that flat venting, but all you have to do is you have to make sure that the, the vent pipe, you kind of roll the fitting a little bit so that you can get the bottom of the vent pipe about a half inch or three quarter inch higher than the bottom of the drain pipe. You know, you don't want the vent pipe and the drain pipe to be in the same plane. And as long as you do that, and as long as you have a little bit of fall to the vent pipe uh, so that any condensate can drain back down to the drain. Uh, you can flat vent and go wherever you want, you know, until you until you can find a wall to get up inside of so that you can start to go vertical again. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this, just type them into the uh, chat. That's the whole purpose of the chat, because I may say something and it may not make sense. You may want clarification, whatever it might be. Just put it in the chat. Happy to uh, happy to help you. So just do that or any other question about your home. Any I don't care what it is. If you have a roofing question, if you have a uh, furnace question, insulation question, deck question, ceramic tile. Okay, Al, what's your question? I'm sure you're typing right now. We will wait. Well, well uh, uh, here we go. How would you move a toilet? Oh, well... Uh, If as long as the okay, that's a great question. How would you move a toilet in a bathroom around floor joists? You you've got a couple of you've got several options. Um, you 
is it, it, I, the last house I built, I had to do this. We completely remodeled the master bathroom. I, I mean, I radically changed where everything was. And I had to I had move the toilet to a location where I had to drill through, I think, five floor joists to um, get the toilet back to the floor joist where it would drop down, you know, to the next level down below. And the thing is, you have to remember the, the toilet drain pipe in the United States is a three inch diameter and it's basically just under three and a half inches. It's about three and three eighths outer diameter. So you have to drill a, drill a three and nine sixteenths hole to get a PVC drain pipe through. That's, that's a big problem. It's just, you can just barely get away with it. And in fact, there's a really good chance most codes won't let you do it. You could never drill that hole um, in a two by 10 and get away with it. You can drill it in a two by 12 and get away with it. You'll have enough wood above and below the hole. But uh, if you have to go, if you have to cross over the floor joist, you better have a really deep floor joist or you're going to really weaken the uh, floor joist. Uh, there are all kinds of guides online, Al, about how, uh, how large a hole can be. It's in the code. Uh, where the hole can be, where it can't be in a floor joist. So all of that is documented. You can you can look all that up. Um, you the other option is, um, and a lot of people don't like to do this, but it's possible. I mean, it's 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 an option. Is you can you can drop the pipe below the floor joist and create a soffit in the room below. Uh, for example, sometimes to disguise the soffit you know, you'll make a trade ceiling. I mean, there's all, there's, there's just ways to do it. It, it just, um, this is why, this is why it's so important for architects, in my opinion, young architects, they, they have to do, um, co you know, they have to do uh, co-op jobs and they actually have to work out in the field. And I, I think it should be mandatory that all architects have to work at least one quarter for a remodeling plumber. Uh, they have to work for um, a heating person, and uh, because those two trades are the toughest ones with respect, they get a, all of a sudden they'll understand the um, the difficulties of how getting pipes and getting heating ducts within a house, how it's a huge challenge. The electrician, they don't need to work for an electrician because electric wires, electricians can do just about anything to get them anywhere. So, but architects, young architects should absolutely work for a plumber uh, for a quarter and work for a heating guy. Um. Don't forget, Al, that um, if you if you've got this problem and, and you have to relocate a toilet, remember about my phone coaching. In other words, you can um, you can um, get me on the phone just like this other gentleman did, and I, I you take photographs and I'll show you exactly and tell you exactly what to do. You know how to uh, relocate that toilet. Um, I've got I've got more than enough practice. I've been a master plumber since 1981, so that's a long time. It's like <laughs> that's 42 years. <laughs> Woo, long time, and had a lot of a uh, lot of great experiences. Uh, if you have any questions about anything about your home, put them in the chat, just like Al did. Happy to help you. Uh, it doesn't matter what it's about. It doesn't have to be about toilets. And in, in fact, we'll talk toilets just for a moment. Um, uh, well, um, so that I, um, I'll look into that. The, here's the, um, I'll look into the Patreon. Here's the problem. I think, uh, maybe, and I may, you might know more about this than I do. Oh, Hey, Steve, how you doing? Um, it, with the, um, Patreon account, if it's, if it's like a, um, subscription or, or a, um, uh, like a membership, where I then become obligated to do something out into the future, I don't find that super attractive. That's a problem. In other words, I know you can have membership websites, um, but if but if to set up a Patreon Patreon account, I have to say, okay, you promised to do this, and um, I mean, I promised to do this, and you promised to donate so much a month. Uh, that's uh, that's not attractive because uh, that you're on this treadmill, you're like in a hamster cage. Um, and it becomes a liability. I mean, in other words, the but if you can just tip somebody. So I mean, if you want to tip me, I mean, here's here's the thing. I could I could publish this all week long. Um, I mean, if you in the meantime, if you want to uh, 
I already have something set up just like it that, that will do exactly what you're talking about. I'm bringing it up right now. Um, I, I should probably, uh, I actually did this early on in the live streams and nothing ever happened. Nobody ever, nobody ever, uh, not one person gave a tip. But if you want, so Al, if you want to tip me, uh, if you want to buy me an ice cream cone or whatever, go right there and you can do it right now. So let's see if, um, you know, the old saying, put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> yes, you can buy me a, an ice cream cone. You can go do it right now. Uh, Steve can't, uh, can't Tim get set up for that so we can tip it. You can just do it. Like I said, just go to that link right now. I'll, I'll put it in again. Go to this link. If you want to tip me during the live chat, just go right here. I'll, I'll start putting it in every week or every day. I'll just put it in multiple times during the day. If you like what you hear, you want to help me out, go right there, leave a tip. And you get to pick what you want to give. You get to pick. I don't, you know, it's, it's easy. And I appreciate it. Uh, uh, let's see. So I was just getting ready just before Steve jumped on. Steve's from the UK. Uh, he sent me a really interesting video uh, done by a, a popular young plumber in the UK. And um, I love the lexicon over there. I, I love their lexicon and what they call things. But what was fascinating, I mean, absolutely fascinating, was to see how they connect their toilets in, in the UK. It's completely different than the way we do here in the United States. And, and to be honest with you, it makes a whole lot more sense the way that they do it over there. Just makes, it's like, duh. You know, all their toilets over there are just a simple P-trap. Here in America, they're the most convoluted S-trap colon things. No wonder toilets get clogged up here in the United States. And it was a really interesting video to watch to see how they connect toilets up in the UK. So really, really very interesting. But I can tell you this is that those plumbers, um, I would imagine that someone would have figured out um, a wall, um, a bracket that basically it's the same way we hang urinals over here in America. That that the, the connection of the toilet, there's like, no, you can't make a mistake. You, you can't have the pipe a half inch high or half inch low. It's got to be the right height. And and um, the way that they do it here in America, there's some fudge. Well, there's some fudge room. But um, uh, anyway, it was uh, it was really interesting to see how they did it. And in the meantime, over the past 10 years, I think that plumber said, I don't know how old that video is. I did, it doesn't matter. But uh they came up with a, a, a better flexible, a, lot, a large kind of flexible ABS plastic pipe that basically is a lot like an accordion. It had has pleats in it, so it's very flexible. You can move it around. And it just, this pipe just slides on to the back of the toilet and makes a complete uh, leak-proof connection. It's really amazing, really amazing. Yeah, I know, four-inch soil pipe over there. That's, that's um, we only use three-inch here. And... Works really, really well. Uh, really, really well. I, I personally feel that four inch for residential just overkill. Uh, just really overkill. Don't don't need to do it. Um, oh, and Al, so I know what you're talking about. So Steve and I have been talking about this off list. Steve brought this to my attention about six or seven weeks ago. That plumber, for example, in the UK, on he's I don't know how come he's so lucky. I don't get it, you know. But he's got on underneath his videos, he's got a little thanks button. And if you click that thanks button, you can leave him a tip. Well, I don't have that enabled in, in my channel. The YouTube has not turned that on for me. And I complained about seven, eight weeks ago. They said it was coming in January. Well, guess what? It's February and I still don't have it on. So I, I'm just, you just have to wait, you know. Uh, I did not watch more of his videos. I did not uh, watch any more, but I will. He's, he's a... He's like, I, I just, um, th there's, he made a couple of mistakes in the video, but I, I cut him some slack. You know, I didn't want to, I'm not going to point that out, you know, because it, it doesn't matter because I'm in America. He's in, he's in, in the UK, but he was a nice young guy. Um, uh, well, Al, I don't know what to tell you. I can't help you while I'm on the live stream. Uh, you, you might have to just restart your machine. Um, the shopping cart's working fine. We've been getting orders all day. So I don't think the problem's in the cart. It just could be at your end. So um, just try to do a guest checkout, see what happens. Okay. 
I um the other day I don't I didn't mention this yesterday, but on I guess it was yesterday morning. <laughs> Everything's just kind of a jumble. <clears throat> but Will and I did a test um, of Google Meet. Uh, I think yesterday morning, and and it's it's basically the Google version of Zoom. And I just wanted to test it out. It worked really, really well, and it had a really interesting feature. I wish that they would have that feature here in the live chat for me, but they don't. But on their Google Meet platform, they have a thing called Whiteboard. And I it's it basically opens up a little whiteboard where I could, if you remember back a month ago, Will suggested that I get a dry erase board to draw diagrams and hold them up to the camera. Well, this whiteboard app does the same thing. And you can drop photos into it. You can draw in it. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. So, ah, good. Well, thank you, Al. Um, and hello, Jason. Great to see you here. Uh, great to see you here. Uh, anyway, uh, so that's it for relocating a tub. I mean, I, or, you know, I talked about it. if you have questions about relocating tubs, whatever, just, just, or any plumbing fixture, I really don't care what it is. Uh, just, you can type it in here. You can type in any question about anything about your home. I'll answer it and do my best, you know, do my best to answer it. Um, what did I want to uh, talk to you about? I, uh, 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 so Al says, I made some journey. He's got a wild ice dam story and the architect should be shot on site. Yeah, well, <laughs> I just, I just talked about that. We can talk a little bit about architects. Um, you, what I think what a lot of people don't understand about architects, and this is my opinion, this is not, and I'm not going to beat up on them. I don't, I don't, I know a lot of really great ones. I know some that were just so, so, but for, for example, in, where I went to school, where I went to college was the University of Cincinnati. And if you wanted to be an arch, you know, if you wanted to be uh, an architect, you, the college you got into was the college of, it was called DAA, DAA. So, so that was an acronym for design, art, and architecture. So if you wanted to be an interior designer, if you wanted to be an art major and do paintings or whatever, or photography, or you wanted to be an architect, you went to that college and they had their own special building. And in my opinion, what architects are, for the most part, they are artists, all right? Think about this, they're artists, but instead of using oil and canvas, they use building materials. And you, you know this to be true for some of the really famous architects who design very famous buildings that, that are, you know, like Frank Lloyd Wright, you know, and, and there's some other really amazing architects who go way out to the edge and um, design some, I mean, just look at the architects that design some of these crazy uh, stadiums and, and uh, look at the, the, the Louvre in, in Paris. I mean, just look at some of the buildings in Las Vegas, for goodness sake. The problem is, is that they tend to, not all, they some, they tend to have, you know, a much more artistic flair than a practical flair. So I call those two things a form versus function. So they tend to put form higher up on the priority list than function. And when that happens, then you can have all kinds of issues. And that might be what happened to your ice dam friend, where... The architect wanted something to look really amazing, whatever, but it's just not practical from a, from a use standpoint. Uh, the only thing about, the only thing I'll say this about ice dams. So the whole ice dam issue has been put to bed, I don't know, um, maybe 30 years ago? I, I'm just guessing. Could have been 35. Uh, that's, uh, I'm just trying to think back as to when this product was invented. It was a Grace Ice and Water Shield. They were the first company to market with this membrane that if you put it on your roof, it's, it's, a, it's, it's got a, it's got a SBS polymer in it, which that S, SBS stands for styrene, butadiene styrene. It's very sticky, very sticky. It's like contact paper. And it, it basically glues itself to the sheathing. And I mean, it's an impervious layer. It's, it's like it's you could build a boat out of it and it's going to you're not going to get any water in the boat. All right. 
if you cover your entire roof with this membrane and you lap it up onto the sides of dormers and you lap it up onto skylights the right way and flash it the right way, which is very simple to do, you are not going to have a leak. I don't care if the ice steam is six feet high. It's not going to leak water into your home. But see, that's where there's a huge disconnect between homeowners and architects and builders and, and where... The poor homeowner, I mean, think of the poor homeowner. Like, think of you. If, if, if you're not in the building trade like I was, you might not know about this. There's thousands. I mean, there are thousands of new products that get introduced every year. It's impossible for me to keep up with all of them. It's impossible. I mean, I would have to study five products a day just to keep up. That's every day, not five days a week. It's crazy. If you, if you were to go to the builder show... <laughs> If you were to go to the builder show every year and 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 the, and not all the companies that make building products exhibit there. But if you were to go there, you could only I did the math one day. You could only spend about 7 seconds at each booth. If you if you wanted to visit every booth in the, in the entire show. Crazy, all right? And every single one of them's got at least one new product. Some have two or three. So, Critch word. The poor homeowner doesn't know to put gray ice and water shield over the whole roof. Or maybe the architect doesn't know. All right, let me get uh, caught up here. Hello, William. Uh, so Steve says this plumber has a series on plumbing disasters where people send in pictures of the most ludicrous jobs. It's funny. He's, he's wow. Um, that's really interesting. Good for him. Um, Al says, I'm a big fan of Joe Lissabrick. Yeah, Joe's a good guy. He's a great building scientist. Uh, I know I attended one of his talks at the at the, at the uh, Home Builder Show. I know. I know exactly who you're talking about, though. I know who you're talking about. Uh, Steve wants to know, how common is it to have a leak behind your tiles in the bathroom over there? I've noticed that you have your faucet coming out of the wall. Um, it's not really that common. Um, you... Um, I mean, I can show you, Steve, that, um, I mean, I mean, in old homes, like the home I grew up in, which was built in the night right after World War II, uh, we just had ceramic tile mud jobs. The faucets always were in the tile wall. I mean, they just, they just were there. And the, the trim plate that, that's, that slides over where the tile was cut around that always had a rubber gasket on it and they would slide that and push that against the wall and that, and that would tighten up and they, that would prevent leaks. I mean, it was, um, um, it, it's not common. That said, that said a friend of mine about, I don't know, four or five months ago, all of a sudden noticed a bubble in her kitchen ceiling and it was a leak and the shower up above. And it just so happened. Here's what happened is that one of the tile near the faucet had gotten a crack in it. And um, when the when they took a shower and water's bouncing off the body and you're rubbing your skin and then the water's bouncing off your head, the water would go down the wall, find this crack, and it actually did cause a leak. So it's, I'm not going to, I'm going to say it's not common, but it can happen. So, all right. Uh, I know you call them taps. I know. And, I mean, the guy called the toilet tank. We call him toilet. It's a tank. He calls it a cistern. I mean, a cistern is something that's outside that catches rainwater that you drink out of. But <laughs> no, I just, I just think the lexicon. It's just amazing. You know, you have you have a completely different lexicon than we do. Uh, Al says, "What's your favorite type of shower valve, and which ones are prone to leaking and should be avoided?" Uh, so that's a great question. Um, The, here's the here's the easy answer. Now you just got to kind of step away from Kohler. So for years ago, like 30, 40 years ago, Kohler was the gold standard, and they they made fa fantastic products. They still do, all right. They still do. But what happened is the I think the grandson of the founder, he decided. I think he got into the business about thirty years ago, and he decided to take the business to the, like to the insane level, in my opinion, this is my opinion, <laughs> where he decided, you know what, 
we're going to become, in other words, he decided it's for, for an American company that Kohler was going to be the equivalent uh, in plumbing fixtures to a Rolex watch. All right. So, I mean, a Rolex, my, my, my watch, this is an L.L. Bean field watch. All right. So it keeps as good or better time than a $30,000 Rolex. I mean, I'm serious. It does. Keeps just as good a time. This thing only gains a second about every six weeks. So why would you pay twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars for a Rolex watch? All right. Well, why would you pay four thousand dollars or five thousand dollars for a Kohler faucet when you can get another faucet that works really well, like my Moen kitchen faucet that's now twelve years old, used heavily every day. My my Moen kitchen faucet, um, not a drip, not a problem, nothing, and that faucet. It would maybe you'd have to spend six hundred dollars for it right now, if that answers your question. So, in other words, now the other end of the spectrum, Al, is you can go to the big box stores, you know, the orange store or the yet blue store, and you can probably buy a faucet for fifty, sixty, seventy dollars, or eighty dollars, or a hundred dollars, and and so that's the low end, and then you can go up to the high end. So. I don't want to go to Kohler. That's way up here. You know, it's way up to the ceiling. But if you go to a Moen or top of the level Delta, uh, you're going to get a pretty good faucet. And they've got a strong reputation. The biggest, the biggest thing I can tell you to do, here's the biggest mistake most people make. In fact, I just did a phone consult call with, a, with an older woman in Columbus, Ohio, two days ago. Yeah, on, on Monday about a faucet. She, uh, the handle broke on her faucet, on her kitchen sink. And uh, anyway, crutch word. When you get, here's an example. So here is the little piece of paperwork. This is the little um, manual that came with that e-tape that I feature, featured yesterday. All right. So here's this little manual. All right. It's got all this information. When you buy a new faucet, uh, and this really goes for anything. And, you know, you'll generally get an instruction manual, a care. It, it's got a little part of how to care for the faucet. It might have an exploded diagram showing you all the parts in the faucet, all the part numbers. You got to keep that. But most people don't. They throw it away or the plumber throws it away or they put it somewhere and it gets tossed. They don't know where it is. Here's how simple it is to keep it. All you have to do is get a, uh, I don't have one in front of me. I, I, you, you know what a plastic Ziploc storage bag is, those plastic bags that, you know, just like a plastic sandwich bag, but they're bigger. So you put all that stuff in one of those bags, you zip it closed, and then you tape it. You take some duct tape and you tape it to the inside of the base cabinet right underneath the faucet, all right, to where it's visible. All right, it's out of the way. It's not causing any problems inside the vanity cabinet. Uh, the door's closed. No one can see it. But you know it's there. And then what's even better is that when you sell the house and you leave and you empty out the vanity cabinet and somebody's checking it, they're going to see it's right there. So you're going to help a future homeowner. They'll know exactly what the model of the faucet is. They'll know exactly what part to get. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So what you should also do is about four or five years into owning a new faucet like that, Get that thing out and find out what the part number is for the cartridges and go buy two cartridges before they go bad, before you need them. They don't go bad. The cartridges don't go bad. Do the same thing. Go buy them. Open up the Ziploc bag. Put the cartridges inside the bag. And if you get a leak or something goes wrong, you don't even have to go out to get the part. You've already got it. That's, that's my advice. All right. Let me get caught up. <clears throat> so my favorite shower faucet or shower valve would be a Moen or a Delta. But, you know, I would step up to the, you know, they have like a builder grade, but so so step up one or two levels to get one of their top faucets. Like, understand, I've got this Moen kitchen faucet, a Moen faucet, it's a Victorian. It looks like it's a 120-year-old faucet. It's very stylish, got a big gooseneck. Um, it's been in for 12 years, it's you. I can't tell you how many times a day it goes on and off. Never a problem with it. Not one problem. Fantastic, fantastic quality. Here we go. Um, 
Let's see. Here we go. Let's get caught up. Yes, I'll bet Kohler, Wisconsin's an interesting town. Uh, Steve, do you have a hard water problem in the UK? Uh, yes, I'm sure that they do have hard water in in, uh, in different parts of the UK would be my answer. Um, yeah, we missed you, uh, uh, Shannon, on the Zoom call. Um, here in London, very bad, but a lot of the UK has soft water. That's interesting, but it's not a disaster. Um I had some European fresh air taps, Steve, and they had, and the scale killed them. Yeah, that's um, that can happen. So I, you know, I have a water conditioner here at my own home. I, we use I soften the water. It was not really bad, but it, it's nice to have soft water. Um, so anyway, those are good questions about the faucets. That's a really great question. A lot of people do not um, they don't save those manuals, and it's so simple to do. It's so easy. I, you know, it's so simple to do. Oh, well. All right. I'll talk about that in just a second. I, my question, so Al says, what do you think about conditioners versus softeners? <clears throat> uh, Steve, the pot filler was in my house in Cincinnati. So I would assume that it's still in that kitchen. I don't, I don't live in that house anymore. I really miss that house. My wife, Kathy, really misses that house. I had promised her when she came to New Hampshire, I was going to rebuild that house. But there's two big reasons why that didn't happen. But I have not given up the uh, that quest. Um, all right. So here's the thing about hard water. So hard water, you know, it's minerals in the water, typically calcium um, and some other minerals like magnesium, they, they easily dissolve and they're in the water. And then what happens is they, when, when they come out, when the water's on the counter or wherever and the water evaporates, it leaves behind the calcium, you know, the calcium doesn't float away. The, the um, water softeners, they, through, through a chemical process, if you paid attention in high school chemistry, they substitute. What happens, they, they there's chemistry going on where the salt, and, and you can use two different types of salt. You can use sodium chloride um, um, salt, or a much more expensive one that's about five times more expensive, potassium chloride. We use potassium chloride here at the Carter House because Kathy is a professional orchid grower, and she cannot have sodium in the water that she uses to water her orchids. So potassium helps the orchids. Anyway, crutch word. <laughs> I should start saying, I'll just start saying crutch word. <laughs> I think that would be funnier. <laughs> the, uh, they work great. Here's, here's the bottom line. They, the regular water softeners that have been, that technology has been figured out years ago. They work fantastic. Uh, pretty hard to ruin them. Uh, I I am not. I have never been convinced about the ones. That, I think they're just gimmicks. But I don't have a testing lab. In other words, I can't. I can just say. I can just give an opinion about it. I cannot say factually that they don't work. But every now and then you'll see these things where you clamp this magic box to the pipe or you wrap wire around it, and supposedly this magic box, you don't all of a sudden get any hard water deposits because it, because of whatever. You know, you know they, they have all this gobbledygook talk. And, and I, I maintain, have you ever, have you ever paid attention? Um, have you ever thought about, like, like take a garden hose and, and turn the faucet on and understand there's a lot of friction in the garden hose. By the time the water gets to there. But you see how fast that water shoots out of the garden hose? In other words, every second, how many feet of water have come out of that hose? Like three feet, four feet? I, I don't know. I mean, depending on what your pressure is, it can be up to six feet at every second. And you think that that, that water going through, past that magic box that fast, the water's going through that pipe, through that magic thing, just as fast for the most part. I mean, yeah, I know it could be a three quarter inch pipe. It's going a little slower and you think it's all getting treated. I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sold. And, and they're not doing anything with the chemistry. 
In other words, the calcium, all those hard water things are still in the water. Whereas with a water softener, they get taken out. They're, they're taken out of the water. All right, here we go. Uh, so that's my answer. Um, they're good. I mean, I just don't like the ones that that are that that are like magic boxes. I, I want the ones that are going to take the chemicals out of the water. Um, yeah, the salt-free ones. That's what I'm talking about. They're not. I, I don't. I'd have to have a testing lab. You'd actually have to have a testing lab where you hook one of those things up, do everything they say. And then, um, you know, let the water do, do whatever it does. And then I would take that water and then I would analyze it. And, and then I would see, I already know what's going to, the analysis is going to be. The chemicals are still there. The calcium is still there. And then I would just take some of the water and let it sit on the counter, let it dry on a piece of black formica. And if I'm left with a white spot, then it's like, well, uh, it's not working. I mean, that's how you test it. That's how you, that's how you test it. And it, well, that's what the scale is, Al. The scale is just the calcium, right? So you got to get rid of the calcium if you don't want scale. Shannon says, uh, all any device needs to work is a glowing blue light. <laughs> so that thing identifies, yes, exactly. Uh, you can tell by the light. <laughs> um, so that, great question. So uh, this is a great plumbing, this is a great plumbing um Live stream. These are great questions, by the way. Al wants to know, going back to drains, do you have a preference for ABS versus PVC versus cast iron? I have all that information on askthebuilder.com. Uh, I urge you to read all of my columns about all of those things. Uh, but I'll, I'll go over it right now. There's pluses and minuses with, with all of them. Um ABS and PVC are both plastic. The ABS, the ABS um, um, is a, I think is better than PVC, but PVC is not bad. I, I've put PVC in for 40 years and I've never had a problem with my original installations. If you prime it and if you put the glue on right and you do everything right, it, it's, it's not going to fail. Uh, it's fantastic material. The big problem I have with with both PVC and ABS is they are very noisy. I mean, very noisy. And if you've ever been in a home that has PVC a, a vertical stack or uh, going, you know, a horizontal branch arm going across the ceiling, and somebody flushes a toilet, it sounds like Niagara Falls in your house. I mean, I have that problem here at the house I'm in now. Uh, I didn't build this house. But the plumber used all uh, uh, PVC. So when when the second floor toilet is flushed, uh, you just hear that water cascading down the inside of the wall. It's horrible. It's horrible. Cast iron. I uh, Go look at my cast iron columns. I used cast iron in my oldest daughter's new home two years ago. Uh, it is a, it's a remarkable product. Actually, I was thinking it's amazing. It was three years ago that uh, we put that in, uh, and it's um, so cast iron is the only thing that's allowed for the most part in bigger, larger industrial buildings, high rises, because the the PVC is a giant. If it catches on fire, it cre creates a really toxic gas. Uh, it's very poisonous. It'll kill you. The cast iron is really wonderful. I mean, the problem is it's just expensive. I mean, it's very expensive. And the cast iron we have today, the modern cast iron, is, is much, much, much better in quality than the, the old traditional cast iron. Today's cast iron is spun cast. So the thickness of the wall of the pipe is very uniform. You didn't have that with the old cast iron from 100 years ago. The, uh, so I, and the cast iron is quiet, uh, easy to work with. One of the one of the benefits, if you've never installed plumbing before, uh, you know, and I've put together literally thousands and thousands of fittings. When you get up to the bigger sizes in PVC and ABS, meaning if I'm working with three inch pipe or four inch pipe, and you're getting ready to glue a fitting, when you slide the fitting onto the pipe and you have to turn it, you only have about a second or two, two three at the most, but and that's only if it's really cold out, to get the alignment perfect because the welding process happens that quickly and you cannot move the fitting. Well, with cast iron, you 
you can move it all day long because the way you make all your connections up are with these rubber, uh, these rubber sleeves. And then they have muffler clamps, this big wide band. You can see all these photos on my website. Go look at my cast iron and you'll see this beautiful cast iron stack I put in my daughter's home. That's the top photo. Actually, I'm going to find it for you right now because I, I really want you to see this. This is a really, really um, beautiful photo. Um, I do not want that. I want this. You need to see this photo, and you'll be able to understand the clamps I'm talking about. Um, this is why, just so you know, if 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 this live stream ever goes big time, <laughs> you know where it could you know really go big time. Um, then I, I would have a director and show this person would know this person would be trained that anytime I start talking about something like if I said, oh, I've got a great video, photo of that on, on on my website, that person off camera would be bringing this up and and and, or, and drag that photo in and you would see it. So this is a this is this is the uh, cast iron. Well, I'll explain it when you see it in here a second. I want you to go to this page and I want you to look at this photo. And I'll explain what's going on here. Um, so, um, okay, I'm going to get to all your questions. Well, I'm going to get to your questions. But anyway, let's. Talk, I want to talk about this photo. Uh, the photo you're looking at, let me pull it up myself so I can see it. Um, at the base of the photo, well, first of all, that fitting right there, that's a four by three uh, Y. That's a four by three Y. So right at the bit, bottom of the photo, uh, where you see the, the black pipe disappear, that's a four-inch stack. So, Steve, there's your four-inch pipe. And the reason why is this pipe that comes off the Y, that's three-inch. And that is a stack that is going all the way up to the attic of the house. So it's it's passing all the way through the second floor, going all the way up to the attic to capture a full bathroom up in the, up in the attic. Um, the other pipe that's on top of the four-inch one is the stack uh, that goes over to the hall bathroom in my daughter's home. So it goes up, it gets up into the floor trusses. See how one, see how beautiful it is to have those floor trusses where nothing's in the way, no holes to drill. It goes kind of across the, the, the ceiling and then it makes another big bend. That's a sweep 90. And then it heads about three, four more feet, eh, about, yeah, about four or five feet before it hits the toilet. And then it captures two sinks and captures the tub. So, but you can see you've got these giant stainless steel band clamps and there's two hex uh, nuts on each one and you tighten it up. And if, and if you need to adjust the fitting, you just, you just untighten it, twist your fitting, then retighten it. So you can, you can adjust the, <coughs> excuse me, you can adjust the fitting multiple times. doesn't matter. Let's get back to the, so I like cast iron. It's quiet. It's a little harder to work with. It's much harder to cut. Uh, it's fireproof. Um, those rubber seals, they'll last forever. Well, forever is a long time. They'll last 100, 200 years. Um, it's it's a little, it's more difficult to put in. Uh, you still have to support it the same way. You know, the code says to support every four feet. Uh, you know, but the, the supports for the cast iron are just a little harder to put in. But to me, if I here's here's the answer to the question: If I was building a new home, I would put all, all the toilet pipes, would all the toilets, all the stacks in the walls would be cast iron, um, probably for showers too. Then when you then when you turn them up into the wall, like for a vanity, you could transform from cast iron to PVC, and because there's not much water flowing out of a vanity. Uh, all of the vent pipes in the house would be PVC. They don't have to be cast iron, uh, you know. So, so I just want cast iron for the toilet pipes and the stacks, so that there's no noise. That's that, that's that's my that's what I would do. All right, here we go. Let's get caught up. So, Steve, I can't. I'm afraid if I click that link, I'm going to shut down the. Uh, I'm going to shut down the live stream. I, I tried to do that the other day, and it, it, it gave me a scary message. So, I'm not going to click that link. I don't know what it is. Um, so, uh, let's see, here we go. Will got a question. Uh, that's right underneath that one we just did. Do you recommend, do you recommend dumping white vinegar in the toilet tank to clean out the hard water buildup? Um, I don't think it's going to do much because it's going to get too diluted. Will, um, white vinegar is a great, 
white vinegar works really great on really thin hard water deposits that you might have on, on the outside of a, uh, like an aerator, but you have to soak it overnight and you, you can't dilute it. You have to soak the aerator in warm white vinegar. So I don't think you want to go out and, and although you could, it's not that expensive. You could empty all the water out of your t toilet tank, turn off the valve, and then overnight, you know, you, right, right, you could fill the toilet tank up with gallons of white vinegar and let it sit all night. And then in the morning, you know, you could, you'll have to scrub some of the scale off. It, it won't dissolve it. It's not like muriatic acid. So I, uh, you can't, you can't just put the white vinegar in the toilet tank water. It's going to be so diluted. It won't do a thing. If that answers your question. Um, here we go. Let's get back here. Can you set up Tim for payment during the chat via YouTube? Um, the answer out of that is no. Um, I think I tried to mention it before. Steve had told me about that on my videos. There's a thanks button that some video creators get. They have not given it to me yet that allows you to leave a tip. Um, if there's a way to do it in the live stream, I don't know how to do it. If, you, if somebody wants to find out how to do it and email me the link, you can bet I'll be right on it. But as I said, if you want to leave me a tip, if while we're doing it, it's really simple. All you have to do is go here. Uh, and I'm not begging for this money. I'm just trying to answer Al's question. I'm not begging. All you have to do is go there. Just go to uh, go to that link that I just put in and leave me a tip. Leave as much as you want. Because you can pick a quantity. In other words, if you want to leave, I'm being facetious here. I really am. If you want to leave $500, not a problem. Just pick that $50 option and make the quantity 10. All right. So you can leave just about whatever you want. Um, all right. Um, so Shannon, um, yeah, well, yeah. The, so here, we'll talk about that. I I told you about a month ago, things are in, in motion here at the house where I will soon be out of I, I'm going to have a different place in the house to be able to do the live stream with a really nice background. I think that's going to happen in less than a month with what's in play here. So that's going to be very nice. And I'm going to invest in a new modern camera, not this crappy 13-year-old built-in crap camera in the iMac. Uh, so that's why I'm not as clear as I could be. You know, and some nice lighting. Uh, the lighting here is, though, not bad that I've got on me. But um, I don't know what's going to happen and where I'm going to go. Uh, and I'm probably at that point going to, I'm going to do s different software that allows me to show you pictures. I cannot do any of that here in, in YouTube. They, uh, I, you know, there's software, live stream software that allows me to do that. The problem of having a director, a second person or a helper, it's very problematic. Two, two things, two issues. The biggest one is Kathy. All right. And I don't blame her. Kathy does not want some stranger coming into our home. All right. Makes perfect sense. I, I'm not really happy about it either. Uh, the other problem is um, you're talking about hiring a person that only is going to work two hours a day. All right. And, and mo people can't even find around here people that, that'll work eight hours a day. In, in other words, um, who would want to, and you'd have to pay them so much money. You have to understand that to get to my home, someone's going to burn up easily five to $10 worth of gas a day. I mean, and then, then they're going to eat up the two hours becomes four hours for them. So it's, it's a, it's a big problem. Okay. Speaking of the boss, she's on the phone right now. Hold on. Yes, dear. How can I help you? I'm live streaming. <laughs> I have a printer, yes, I do, but and I do have some ink for it. I'm sure mine's going to do this. No. Mine will do the same thing. She's going to have to go to Staples uh, is all I can say because it just, well, I'm just, I'm just trying to tell you, it won't work here because mine bends the paper around, you know, there's drum. I mean, it's, it'll, it won't, it, 
yeah, it's not going to work. Okay. We had a little emergency here in the Carter house. <laughs> a little printing emergency. All right, so where was I? Um, oh, helper. So it's, I'm not going to get, you know, I, for me to have a helper, it has, to, you hear, here's what would have to happen. I would have to expand, ask the builder, and I'm actually trying to do just the opposite. Uh, I would have to hire somebody 40 hours a week. They would have to be multidisciplined. In other words, they would have to have really strong IT background. They would have to uh, be, they have to have all this, this huge skill set because I would have so many things for them to do during the day. And they'd even have to be a good videographer because we, we're going to probably shoot some videos too. And, and then they got to know how to do this uh, streaming software stuff. So you're, you're talking about a huge investment to get somebody to do that. And then to do it right, because Kathy doesn't want them here in the house, it means you got to go rent someplace or go up to the shed and, do, you know, spend $10,000 in the shed to, to, to insulate it and get everything you need up there, blah, 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 blah. In other words, it's a big, it's not just waving a magic wand saying, oh, get a helper there to help you do the live stream. That's not. That's not how it works. Not, well, that's, that's not how it works in my world. Maybe in your world, it works that way. Not mine. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, Will said, I'd shut off the incoming water first. Um, so, um, yes. But, but Will, you need to understand, um, I, I just don't, um, I just don't, don't expect magic to happen. You're going to, if the deposits are really thick, white vinegar is not nearly as strong as muriatic acid. If you were to put muriatic acid in the toilet and let it sit overnight, man, it, the, the lime's going to be gone. Like, whoa. But it's also going to probably eat up all the rubber seals and all kinds of other bad things. Uh, but white vinegar, it's if there's heavy deposits, it's just going to, it's going to maybe soften them. Maybe, big maybe. So, um, so anyway, all right, here we go. Um, eight bit vinyl. Speaking of cleaning, I have a super expensive cast iron farm sink. Any recommendations on how to clean or protect it? Um, well, stain solver. Are you kidding me? <laughs> go <laughs> eight bit vinyl here. Actually, we're going to do that right now. Why, why, you know, I always tell people, go do this, go do that, go do this. And then I have a feeling that people, many people, not you, not you, but many people are lazy and they go, I'm not going there. You know, I, I got better things to do, blah, blah, blah. So instead of doing that, I'll just give you the link. So uh, I'm going to give you a link and you're going to look at these photos and you are not going to believe it. And it would, and, and it would do the exact same thing for um, cast iron. I just don't. I just don't have somebody who has sent me cast iron photos. But when you look at this photo, I'm sending you. When I take this page, I want you to look at the photo on this page. You, most people would go. Most people would. So look at that. Go to that page right now. Go to that page. Uh, Eight bit vinyl. Most people would would go. I'm tearing that sink out. I'm, that that. There's no way it could be salvaged. Understand that you could have the exact same stain issues in your cast iron sink because we have a china sink here we have a a true china sink which has the same glaze coating as your cast iron sink and i every and, and i get these food stains in it and every now and then i have to put the stopper in fill it with a little bit of warm water throw some stain solver in and an hour later it looks brand new so so you're going to go to that page and you're going to buy some stain solver and you're and i'm and here you're going to do me a favor you're going to take photos, really great photos, just like you see on that page. Please take great before photos. Take multiple photos. There, it's remember if you're using a smartphone, you get to take the photos for free. You know, make sure there's not a glare. Make sure it's clear. Blah 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 blah. And send me the flipping before photos, and then after you clean it, you know, after they get the sink clean, dry it off. You know, so there's no glare. And then take photos of the sink when it's perfectly clean. It's going to look brand new. I'd appreciate it if you would do that. Here we go. Um, 
Oh, I didn't know that. There, look at that. Um, I, I let's see here. I'm going to get ca caught up here. Um, wait, Shannon says lighting is key. Yes, I, I, I yes, that hit. Yes, yes, um, yes. Um, I mean, I, you may not, I, I don't know that I've ever shared this. So I was trained how to do video professionally. Uh, it may not show here. <laughs> um, this is a low budget operation here, but I was trained how to do video by both the ABC and NBC affiliates in Cincinnati, Ohio. And you learn really quickly about lighting. So you, and, and I've been, I've been in the studio. I've been, I've been on live television in the studio when we had big disasters going on and uh, talk about lighting. I mean, boy, the lighting up above you in the studio, holy tomato. Woo. Here we go. Let's get caught up. Uh, so um, YouTube takes 30% of your super chat donations. Isn't that, that's just, that's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. That's what skimmers. Are you kidding me? Well, it's better. I, I just, just go to my cart. And then the only thing that happens to me, if you just, you, well, I'll give it again. You know, I'll give the link again. I keep saying it. Just go here. None of this is hard. How many times do I say that in a live stream? None of this is hard. You want, if you are so intent on giving me a tip and helping me out, go here. Just go there. Go to that link. I get all the money. <laughs> except for 2.7%. 2.7% goes to the credit card people, all right? So just go there. To heck with the, why should we enrich Larry and Sergey? Come on. Are you serious? Just go there. Here, let's put it in again. Let's do it again. We can do it every 10 seconds if you want. We can put that, we can put that link in every 10 seconds. <laughs> I'm not begging, though. Just if you want to tip me, go to those links. None of this is hard. All right, let me get caught up. Um, uh, all right. Um, <laughs> Al, we need to have a little side bet. Let's, Al, here's the bet. Tell me if you agree on this. Um, I don't know if you have a favorite uh, candy or food or whatever, but I will bet you um, like, here's what we'll do. If the Bengals win the Super Bowl, you need to buy me and, and have shipped to me one pound of dark chocolate pecandes from Aglamisi's in Cincinnati, Ohio. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the link right now. So it's only like, it's going to be 30 bucks. All right. Something like that. So uh, let's go here. I'll show them to you. I love giving these guys um, a plug. Because they make an amazing ice cream and amazing candy. Um, and I'm going to give you... Um, so I'm just going to give you their main page. And you can just kind of poke around. But just go to their candies page, their chocolate page. But you, if the Bengals win, you ship me one pound box of dark chocolate pecandes. All right? Really fantastic candy. And if the Rams win... I will ship you some favorite food or whatever that's equivalent in price. You let me know. If, okay, you say yes. You want to do this bet. Okay, so you just have to tell me uh, once it happens. If you agree to that bet, then after the game, then we'll, one of us is going to get together and I'll give you the address. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give you the address where you're going to be shipping the pecanis. <laughs> Oh, and I'm going to savor each one. I'm going to savor each one. They're so delicious. And this time of year, just so you know, this time of year, since it's winter, they ship their ice cream anywhere across the United States. Uh, it, when it gets hot, they, they, they stop shipping ice cream. I am here to tell you, go to, go to that website. Go to Aglamises here. Um, let's see. Go to the Aglamises website again. And... Order some of their mocha chip ice cream. If you like dark chocolate and if you like coffee, if you're a coffee drinker, I'm just going to warn you, you're going to get addicted to that mocha chip ice cream. Um, okay, great. I'll send you that same candy. That's a great bet then. That's a great bet. Uh, 
Yes, got it. Okay, this is going to be fun. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Um, and just remember that these this Bengals team, this young Bengals team, they're, yeah, I'll tell you what they remind me of. I'll just say this really quickly. They remind me of the Patriots back when the Patriots started their big run of winning all the Super Bowls. You know, when Tom Brady was a lot younger. I, because I can, I, I've followed the Bengals for years. I mean, remember, I, I was born and raised in Cincinnati. I've been, I've been to so many Bengals games. My father-in-law had season tickets. My father-in-law's season tickets were were, the, were like the best in the stadium. They were in the in the. If you remember, if you know anything about Cincinnati before they tore that stadium down, they were in those yellow cushion seats, and our seats were. I just had to lean over the railing. And I looked directly down into the press box where the national announcer sat. You know, that was back in the day of Howard Cosell. I mean, I would look down and see Howard Cosell. So that's how good the seats were. And I went to every single Bengals home game back when they were horrible. But I was also there and went to the, I was at the Freezer Bowl when they won the uh, a AFC championship game against San Diego and went to the Super Bowl. But they didn't win the Super Bowl. But they've they've been there at least once. I don't know. But that but what happened is then the Bengals had problems like a lot of teams have. And I don't know if this is the same way in the UK, Steve, with uh, soccer teams. Um that you know, there there are some players who have really big egos and they're prima donnas, and they they they're they're toxic. That those kind of people are toxic on a team because it, there's a reason why they it's called a team. <laughs> You know, the word T-E-A-M, that's, that's, anyway. And the bank, and so we had a problem, like Chad Johnson was, was a toxic player for the Bengals 10, 12 years ago, 15 years ago, horrible, horrible. Well, these guys, this current Bengals team, I'm telling you, they're a lot like the Patriots. The Patriots, if, if, if they had a prima donna on their team, they got, they got rid of them. They, they got rid of them because they're toxic. And it creates dissension on the team. And and here I'll just say this last thing. The reason the Patriot, I'm sorry, the reason the Rams and the Bengals are where they're at right now is because they understand something. But when you if you're if you play competitive sports, I don't care what it is. Uh, I used to play when I was younger. I, I, I played football. Um, you, everybody wants to win. Everybody wants to win. But you have to know how to win. That's the magic. And the magic of how to win is a blend of, of really great coaching. And it's it's of, of where the players on the team understand that it's a true team effort. And man, the Bengals are there right now. That's where they are mentally. So it's going to be a re I just don't know anything about the Rams. So it's going to be, I just know I'm going to really enjoy those pecanis. I'm actually going to eat them. On the live stream, I will eat one every day after the after they arrive. Just so you know, Al. <laughs> it's either I'm going to do that, or I'm going to be eating some, uh, you know, some crow. Right? <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, get caught up on the comments. So Steve wants to know, is New Hampshire one of the states that doesn't have a crash helmet law? I guess what you mean, I think what you mean by crash helmet, like a, a helmet that you have to wear when you ride a motorcycle. Correct. You do not have to wear a helmet in New Hampshire. Not required. If I, I ride motorcycles, all right? So, but if you don't wear a helmet, um, we I call those people that when they're out riding their bike, I, I say they're riding a donor cycle. <laughs> If, if I see somebody on a motorcycle, I say, oh, there's somebody on their donor cycle <laughs> because they're going to be an organ donor. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, um, Al, as long as you're not a bear. <laughs> not, no, I'm not. Just so you know, I, I totally gave up on football. I, 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 they, I have not watched football for a few years at all. Uh, once, once the NFL woke up, once they went woke, I was done with them. Done. Just like that other guy kicked me the curb last week. All right. We talked about that on Monday. Uh, the only reason I've only watched, I guess, three games. I've just watched, I watched the, I think I watched week 15 of the Bengals. 
and then we watched the Titans game, and then we watched the game this past Sunday. But that's it. I, I I'm uh, I'm done with the NFL. All right. So, but I have to watch the Bengals. Uh, okay. Yeah, your players, your gentlemen. Good for you. Uh, so Shannon says soccer uh, stars here seem very good about keeping up a good image. Yep. Uh, and uh, good. All right. Good. Shannon says uh, we stayed in the hotel with the players for lunch. They were very modest. Uh, very interesting. Good. Um, the Bengals sounds. Like, oh, <laughs> it's the Bengals. So it's the just like the Bengal tiger. So B E N G A L S. Bengals. Um, yeah, exactly. So same same thing. I'm I'm done with the, I'm done with all these companies and all this all this woke stuff. I you know you can vote with your dollars, man. You know, so I don't want to be uh, I don't want to be um, I don't want to count in the ratings. You know, as somebody watching them. You know, so to help them out. All right. So that's how they get. That's that's how the whole ever. I mean, you know, me being in the media, that's how advertising works. Meaning, if 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 the NFL only had ten people watching their games, seriously, I'm being really facetious. If they only had ten people each week, no one would advertise. <laughs> They'd go no, or or they would say, "I'll give you a dollar. I'll give you a buck." to run our commercial. <laughs> Whereas, I don't know what, I have no idea what it's going to, what's a commercial going to cost? Somebody can look it up right now. You as Will or Shannon, anybody look it up right now. Go, go, go type into Google. What's a Super Bowl commercial cost this year? Uh, I, I'm going to guess, I'm just taking a wild guess. Um, I don't know, 10 million. Maybe I could be way off. I could be way low. I'm just going to say $10 million dollars for a 30 second commercial in the Super Bowl this year, just guess. So, uh, all right. Anyway, um, got, we've got, I want to thank you for tuning in. We've had quite a few people watching, uh, probably the highest number I've ever seen. So I want to thank you. I, I just, so you know what's going on. I'm Tim Carter. I'm the ask the builder guy. You can see it right there. Ask the builder. Uh, if you've not been to my website, please go, uh, please sign up for my newsletter. The newsletter it's, Aside from the live stream, I have so much fun doing this live stream. Um, the second most fun thing I do each week is write my newsletter. And if you're not getting my newsletter, I think you're making a big mistake. Uh, for example, like last Sunday's news. In fact, I'll, I'll, let me share it here right now. Let me show you why I think you're making a mistake. Um, because sometimes what happens is I, I don't even really hardly talk at all about um, about um, you know, have anything to do with, with home building remodeling. You know, I just, I'm, it just depends on what mood I'm in on Friday. And this was a really interesting newsletter here. Let me sh share this one with you. So this one was really, really light on uh, home improvement, very light on home improvement. Here's the link coming up. Um, and, but it was really heavy on life lessons. And I think that you might like, so, so if you like this newsletter that I just put in there, if you just read it, they're not too too long. Then you're going to get a lot of that, but you get it in bits and pieces. You know, typically I almost always share the, the column that I wrote the week before. Um, this week, the people in the newsletter, because many, many there's like 25,000 people on the newsletter list. Um, not many of them tune into the live stream. So they're going to so they're going to uh, see, you know, I created a <clears throat> page on the website yesterday morning for this tape measure, remember? I talked about this tape measure yesterday. This is that e-tape. So it's the one that, um, you know, it's got a digital, it's a digital tape measure, you know. So I've got a column, uh, you know, on the website that I created for that. So, I, you know, because that's for the people that don't watch the live stream. And I just share, I typically, if I, if I get a really great story, I've shared that in the newsletter. Um, I sh I'll tell you what I did maybe three weeks ago in the newsletter. Um. I'll be right with you, Jimmy. Um, um, I had a lady. Um, I, well, here's what happens. Because of, I don't know how to say this without sounding a little pretentious. So forgive me ahead of time. You know, because I've put myself out there. In other words, I have this website. You know, I've got all these videos. I don't feel that I'm a big star at all. I really don't. Because there, I know there's people who are much more. I mean, I, I don't have people stopping me in the grocery store. That tells me all I need to know. 
All right. That tells me all I need to know. I don't have people. Or I've only had one or two people in my entire life approach me and say, you're the Ask the Builder guy. And, and one of them did it at a restaurant only because they heard me talking and they recognized my voice from my videos on YouTube. I had a I had this woman who, um, and, and I think it's caused by these things. I think these smartphones. I had a woman the other week, maybe three weeks ago, she just emailed me. She was so nasty about, about this whole digital library thing deal and blah, blah, blah. And, and she had made a mistake. All right. She thought I was trying to screw her. And uh, she just read me the riot act. And so I printed her email in the newsletter. Now, I, I only used her first name. I don't even know if I did that. I mean, I'm not going to expose people. I'm not going to say John Smith or whatever the real name is. I'm not going to do that. But I used it as a teaching moment because I wanted, I wanted my subscribers to know, like, look, this is, this is what I consider to be bad behavior. She automatically accused me of something. It was she's the one who made the mistake. Here's the mistake she made. And then I went on to say, you know, she could have written the email like this. She should have, she, if she, in just like three sentences, she could have said, hey, Tim, I, I, I read your column about the free giveaway and I went to your website and I, I don't know what I did. I don't know if I did something wrong. I don't know if there's something wrong with your website, but I couldn't make it work. I couldn't get the things for free. And I um, instead got this thing where I could get 40% off. I thought that was free. So did I miss it? Um, can you help me? I mean, that's that's a polite way to do it. And so, I, so I'll put that kind of stuff in the newsletter. All right, so I, I, I'm kind of beating a dead horse. I'm just saying you're going to like the newsletter. So just go to the homepage of askthebiddle.com right there below that video. Just put your name, put your email address, double check it, make sure the email address is correct. Hit submit. Then go check your email because you're going to get an email from me. And in that email is a confirmation link. You got to click the confirmation link. Link. If you don't click it, you're not getting the email. You're not getting the newsletter. All right, here we go. Let's get caught up. Yeah, Steve, same thing happening over here. Uh, thank you very much, Al, for uh, getting people to press that like button. Thank you so much. Um, Jimmy says, Tim, I'm going to be building a bar. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you say a barno. I think you just might mean a barn. Uh, saw online your plumbing services on piping diagram layout. I talk about this one. Okay. Uh, I have been a master plumber since um, 1981. And part of that exam process, when you take, when you sit for the exam, you have to do a very complex drawing um, where you have to show, you have to properly show the vent pipes and drain connections for all of these crazy fixtures. It's crazy. And it just so happens I've always loved doing that. I, lo I love that. And the week, I think the exam was on a Saturday morning. And on, in fact, I know it was, it was on a Saturday morning. And there were maybe, I don't know, I think there were 15 guys taking the, the test. And I get a call the following Monday morning from the head of the plumbing department, his name was Elmer. I forget his last name. Uh, nice guy. And he said, Tim, he says, um, he said, first thing I want to tell you is I want to congratulate you. You passed the test. So congratulations. You're now, you know, a master plumber. I went, Oh, awesome. Cause it was kind of a hard test, but I, 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 I'm pretty good with tests, but he said, but the strange thing was, he said, in all the years of, of, um, of me being head of the department, and even when I was not the head, no one, no one has ever gotten the diagram completely right. He said, you're the first person, I think, in the history of the city to have ever done it. And he said, how did you do that? And I was like, I was like, <laughs> you know, I just, I couldn't process it right away. I just thought, wow, that's pretty that's a pretty neat honor, but, but, you know, the only person that would care about it would be me and Elmer. No one else cares. <laughs> no one else cares. And, and I just said, Elmer, I said, I, I said, I just really understand it all. I said, I understand how it all works together. I said, I just think I, I just understand it. And so 
maybe the other people don't really fully understand it. Anyway, so fast forward 20, 30 years. So I started doing these. I start, I don't even know how I started doing this. I started doing these, these plumbing isometric drawings. So in other words, if you as a homeowner want to do your own plumbing, and almost every state you're allowed to do it here in the United States, but the plumbing department tries to throw a barricade in front of you. They try to go, they, 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 you know, because they're trying, you know, they're trying to kind of force you over to a plumber. So they say, oh, you want to do your own plumbing? Oh, I see. They go, you, you need a permit for that. Okay. Well, if you want to get a permit, you need to submit to us a riser diagram or an isometric diagram. And at that point, the homeowner's eyes glaze over. Like, what the hell is that? <laughs> well, I draw this for people, all right? And I, I used to do it by hand, but now I do it all on the computer, and they're absolutely gorgeous. They're absolutely gorgeous. In fact, if you want to see one, all right, if you want to see what one looks like, um, you can actually go here. I, I think I have a sample one that I let people download. Uh, tell me if this works. It's funny, I, I don't know... Um, I got to see if that URL. Yes. Okay. So go to this URL and tell me. Oh, uh, oh, so Steve's got to go. Man, I'm sorry. Okay. So I hope I didn't miss you, Steve. I didn't see that. So uh, um, um, have a great night. Thanks for being here. I'm sorry. I am running really late uh, here. So go to that website and you might be able, you'll actually see a smaller version, but I think you can download a bigger version of that PDF. Anyway. Crutch word, I draw those for people. And I think my pricing is really affordable. I usually turn them around in two days, three days at the most. They're priced depending on how many bathrooms you have in the job. Uh, so one bathroom house, two bathroom, three up to four. I do like commercial drawings. I also can draw waterline drawings for you. Uh, I, so you have, to try, you have to size your water lines right. If you don't do that, you're going to really hurt yourself. Uh, I also draw gas lines. Gas lines are very important. You, if you mess up gas lines, you're done because you you, you can starve an appliance for gas. Uh, so that's a, you have to do a lot of calculations to be able to draw gas lines. So I hope that answers your questions. So uh, anyway, um, just go to drawplumbingplans.com, drawplumbingplans.com, and you can see some stuff there. Uh, all right, here we go. Um, so I hope that answers your question, Jimmy. Um, I'd love to draw your plan for you. Um, all right. So let's see here. I'm going to shoot. Out. Okay. So good night, Steve. I hope you have a great night. Um, going to have a great night here. I know that. Um, well, been on for an hour and 22 minutes. That's a long time. And if once again, if you, if you like what you've heard, hit that like button. I'd appreciate it. It really helps us with Google. Uh, if you, or if you got onto the live stream late and you came here because it's about relocating a bathtub, um, YouTube, they automatically archive this live stream. Once I end it, it may take a few minutes, but you can rewatch the front end. In the first 15, 20 minutes, I talk about relocating a tub. And uh, you should probably read that. And I have a column about it at the website. Let me um, pull that up for you really quickly and put that in here. It's funny, I had that up all along and I forgot to to uh to post it for you here here's a here's a column and it actually has that photo but here's here's the uh, column and you should go there and read this because it kind of describes some of the challenges and and what you do um to um you know if you're going to relocate and, and move a bathtub so once again if i had an assistant this would already have been done blah 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 there's an old saying, if I could eat sawdust and poop out two by fours, I'd be a millionaire. All right. So um, anyway. <clears throat> so, uh, all right. So, oh, Will's got a question. I was afraid you were going to ask that question. The brake job went sideways. <laughs> uh, so I, 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 the first bolt that I tried to take off to get to, to, to be able to do it, I could not budge. I, 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 you know, I just couldn't do it. I don't. And so next Tuesday morning, I'm going into the shop. They'll fix it while I wait. So I'll just sit there and have a cup of coffee. Um, so anyway, uh, but like on my truck, I, 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 I don't know. I, I hadn't been doing the live streams back then. I was in Cincinnati 
in October. I had to drive from New Hampshire to Cincinnati. I'm about 100 miles outside of Cincinnati, and my right front caliper on my truck freezes up. Are you kidding me? So, you know, the brake's overheating. I have to drive to Cincinnati. You know, I didn't care. I just thought, big deal. Just the caliper's ruined anyway. What do I care? You know, um, and luckily, one of my friends in Cincinnati is a good friend of mine. Uh, you know, I had planned to have, actually, I was going to have dinner with him the next night. Um, he's an orthopedic surgeon and he loves his hobby. He has two hobbies, restoring old vintage radios. I mean, old radios. And he loved, loved, loves working on cars. And he's, he owns this big old car dealership in Cincinnati. And so to make a long story short, um, I don't know, we, we had to put it off for a while, but I, that Sunday we Dude, we were in his garage. I, we had that flipping wheel. He had ne he had never done a big truck brake before, but I, we had the whole thing torn apart. We even had to put on a brand new brake line. Um, but um, I, I work on my truck. I've never had trouble getting the bolts off. This bolt was a little tight and a kind of a tight spot. So I I don't know what the deal is. So I couldn't get it off. So anyway, let the pros do it. They'll do it on Tuesday. So anyway. Uh, all right, I'm going to get out of here. And I... Thank you for being here today. If you like what you see, hit the like button. Uh, if you have topics that you want covered in a live stream, it's really easy to let me know. Just go to askthebuilder.com. I want same thing. Why do I tell people to do this? Why don't I just do it? Why don't Why don't I just give you the link in this in the thing here? You know, and I'm going to give you the link right now where you can go. It's really simple, uh, and you can go here. You can fill out a simple little form. And you can tell me, hey, Tim, I saw you on the live stream. Um, and could you could, would you consider doing this in the live stream? So go to that page. It's the it's the Ask Tim page. So just put your name, your email address. And and uh, just so you know, if you don't want me to know your email address, you can put in anything. You could you could just put in ABC at XYZ.com and it's still going to go through. I'm not going to email you. Nothing happens. Um, but I'll get your message, whatever you type. But just give me... Um, if you've got ideas about what we should be doing on the live stream, send it to me that way. You can put it in the chat. You can do whatever you want. I am going to get out of here. And I appreciate you being here today. And I hope that you're here in the future. And once again, if you uh, have got ideas that you want covered on the live stream, you just need to let me know what you want to talk about. I'm happy to do it. Happy to do it. Have a great night. I uh, We're going to get snowed on starting tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow night. Another big dump of snow. Maybe, maybe. They were wrong about the last one, just so you know. Uh, I live in central New Hampshire. This past weekend, they predicted we were going to get 12 to 18 inches. I got five. Although my neighbor, Will, who's right here on the live stream, lives maybe, uh, I don't know, I've never mapped it, Will, but I'm just going to guess that you live, um, I don't know, as the crow flies, you probably live uh, 70 miles east of me. Will got dumped on. He got almost 20 inches of snow. But uh, I only got five. Right now, I got to go downstairs. Some of the snow fell off the roof right before the live stream and onto the front porch. I got to go shovel that off and uh, before it freezes tonight, I think. Let me check, see what the temperature is right now outside. I'm in good shape, 39 degrees. But yeah, we got a winter storm watch that's for 7 o'clock tomorrow night. That's going to turn into a winter storm morning in the morning. Um, so... Um, Maybe in actually in an hour, they'll probably change it to a windstorm morning. Anyway, big snow coming tomorrow night. Hopefully. Well, hopefully not. I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> oh, and I'll 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 leave one last thing here because uh, Al kept promoting it. If you liked what you heard on the live stream, and because YouTube won't let me do anything, if you want to buy me an ice cream cone, go right there to that link, buy an ice cream cone, or do whatever you want. I really don't care. Uh, but there's the method. If you want to leave me a tip or whatever, because I've helped you save you some money, go ahead and buy me um, a thing. And then soon, soon, and and gosh, well, it'll take, it'll be three weeks because it'll take a week to get here. Um, so three, here's what's going to happen. About three weeks from today, <laughs> I'm going to take a bite of a picandi <laughs> that Al has, would have sent me. <laughs> We're going to have fun with this, Al, for the next uh, 12 days or so. It's going to be awesome. Uh it's going to be actually what I would um, what I would really like, Al, if you're still here, uh, is for you to privately 
get in touch with me and, and I will get rid of it after the Super Bowl. But I'm more than happy to exchange cell phone numbers with you so that <laughs> so that during the game, we can text one another. <laughs> but if you don't want to do that, uh, I'm okay with that. Okay. I just want to let you know that, you know, if you want to rub it in during the game or vice versa, we can do that. All right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh you oh you need a shear pin for your uh I always kept plenty of those in stock, man. Uh, there I was not gonna be without a flipping shear pin. Uh all right. Okay, I gotta go. Thanks for being here. And this is this could be the longest live stream we've ever done, hour and 30 minutes. Once again, hit the like button if you like what you saw, and I will be here tomorrow. And um yeah, Shannon, good night, buddy. And good night to everybody. Good night, Will. Good night. I know Steve's already gone. Uh, Lorene wasn't here tonight. Good night, Al. Um, and uh, everyone, everyone else. Jimmy, I, I, it's really hard to keep track of all the names, just so you know, from my end. Thanks for being here. I will be here tomorrow. And uh, you have a great night. And I am Tim Carter. And you've been watching Ask the Builder right there. See it? Ask the Builder Brick. <laughs>